Friday edition of <laughs> Kickback with Kelly and Barbara. Hopefully you've had a great week and the weekend is looking all set for you to go out there and have a little bit of fun with lots of safe distancing. With lots of safe distancing. <laughs> Hopefully a little bit of sun. It's been quite rainy this week. Yeah. I mean, like the, the forecast has just not been on our side, but no. hopefully weekend it's going to look a little bit brighter now it's all about the families on fridays and what better way to focus on the family than to make sure that the little ones in our lives are always taken care of that's right if you have a young child like myself three and a half years old and with the energy of about five adults combined uh, you would know that it takes a lot of work to get a child exhausted but Is also why they say it takes a village it does take a village <laughs> it takes barbara Tiger. it takes Tiger. my husband it takes Nana. my mom it Grandpa. takes my dad. Uh, but the whole point is that you do need to be doing lots of little things to keep them engaged, to keep them interacted, and to make sure that they're not just sat in front of a telly all day long. Uh, so who better to come and talk to us than someone who has uh, specialized of late in dealing with those young children. Let's get on Richard Farmer from Little Kickers, uh, who has actually... I'll, I'll tell you this, the backstory, his kids and my kid, Sienna, actually go to the same school. So uh, that's yes. how we got to know each oh. other. We did, yes. And then you told me all about Little Kickers. Yeah. What is Little Kickers? Well, firstly, happy Friday. Good hey. evening, everyone. <laughs> um, and thank you for having me on the show. Um, so Little Kickers, um, it's actually a franchise business. We're, we're a global business. We're, we're in um, 350 franchises now globally. Wow. And before COVID, there was 71,000 children going through the program globally. Um, but Little Kickers to me is really about um, a business that was created Aww. by a mom for a child. Um, Christine Sanker, she was a banker in London um, about 16 years ago and had nothing to do for her children between 18 months and five years old. And she created a game that then basically grew and grew and grew and that became Little Kickers. Um, and it's a business that kind of I, I invested in and brought to Singapore because it's something from my own heart. Um, you have one child, I have three. I know you can't tell by my my age, um, but in the way I look, well, yes, I've got three kids under six. And what I saw in Singapore was that there was something for those children that have a lot of energy that want to learn and to be out there. So that's why we looked at the um, Little Kickers program and brought it to Singapore. Now, Sienna's uh, gone for a couple of classes. She absolutely loved them. And I think one of the things that really stood out for me was the fact that from 18 months, you've got sessions for little ones. And obviously, it's interactive. The parents get involved as well. Um, but there isn't too much out there for such young children. So how do you manage? How do you manage with such young kids? How many, yeah, how many coaches take each class? How many coaches? Good question. Um, no, we, we, I mean, pre-COVID, um, the max we'd ever have in a class is 18. And with the younger ones, 16, we always have two coaches. Mm -hmm. The main thing little kickers have developed with a certain terminology, we believe in play, not push. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we bring children in, and it, maybe it'd be football, but we want a safe and a really exciting introduction to sport of any kind. So we have programs that are developed for different age groups. So we have the little kicks, which are the 18 months to two and a half. Then we have the junior kickers, which two and a half to three and a half. Then we have the mighty, uh, sorry, the mega kickers, which is um, three and a half to five and a half. And then five and a half to seven, that's our um, uh, mega kickers um, business. Um, and what it is, is that we've designed the programs to also be educational. So they're actually playing games. They're really looking at how they learn um, what we do. So we focus on numbers, colors, and doing that. We also break down the games to bite-sized pieces, which keeps them really engaged. So they're really enjoying the playing it. And I think what's also key is that we bring the parents along. So it is parent participation. So the parents start enjoying that journey. But what I'm really- I think I enjoy and they playing- they get a workout as well. Yeah, yeah they do. <laughs> oh, I think I, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed running around with Sienna. And at that age as well, especially when she was very young, you can't just leave a kid to their own devices in a class like that as well. So no. to actually have the parent there, it breaks down the barrier a little bit. Sometimes they're a little bit shy, right? Yeah, the, the, that's, a, that's a key thing. A lot of um, sport, people feel quite reserved, especially if their parents don't play a lot of sport. Mm -hmm. So we want to introdu introduce that. So we have a lot of children join the program. They've never done sport before, maybe a bit reserved. And we really bring, build that skill set out because often, as you probably rightly know, having children, um, kids listen to coaches, they don't always listen to parents. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you, there's that bit of guidance. They really enjoy the fact that they all have a ball. Um, they can all get integrated. We always get them to talk to each other and to share and give those key actual life skills. It's not just about sport. Um, but most of it is about having fun. 
and really getting people energized, running around, and um, getting involved in sport at an early age. Now, now oh, sorry, I'm going to jump in there. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> Fight over me. It's fine. <laughs> You're loving it. Um, football is seen as a predominantly male sport, though. I mean, you look at it at a professional mm. level, it's still, especially when you're looking at what's televised, it's still predominantly for the males. Uh, so, what about the balance within little kickers? guys versus girls, is there a distinction or is it a giant melting pot? No, it's a really great question. And actually in Singapore, most of our children at this moment are female in terms of the younger age group. Um, the, the passion for me was, I have a daughter, was to get her into sport at an early age. Often you find, you know, what the you kind of positioned as to what you want to go into mm -hmm. so um little kickers as a whole we had our first um little kicker that joined 16 years ago playing the england team female um and actually women's football is the fastest growing sport globally mm. um and it's because it brings a very a, everyone's got a place on the pitch you yeah. can be any different size but you can be you can play those different things but we find our program works really well with children that may have not done a lot of sport before and can bring them in, but uh, I'm really passionate. I think um, football's for anyone, but sport's for everyone. That's the key thing. So, so if, uh, if Sienna joins Little Kickers full-time, is she gonna be the next big thing in football? I can't promise she'll be the next big thing in football. <laughs> but Does I she wear her jersey? Yeah, yeah uh, I, I can promise she can, um, she'll be um, probably the next big thing in some sport, having met Sienna. Um, what we can always promise is that they're gonna use life skills. You're gonna learn actual skills that you can take with you throughout your life. Being part of a team and being part of um, understanding other people really puts you in a really good position for later life, in my opinion. Wonderful. Awesome. All right. Well, we're going to pop off for a quick break. But when we come back, we've got active health coach on one scene coming in and joining us in studio as well. This is Kickback with Kelly and Barbara. Don't go anywhere. Back with Kelly and Barbara on this lovely Friday evening. We've got Active Health Coach on one scene joining us in studio today, as well as Richard. Thank you so much for coming. How are you? Hello, everyone. I'm good. Yeah. 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 Look at look at you, so smiley so, and, yeah. Yeah. and everything. Um, so tell us a little bit more about what you do as an Active Health Coach. And as an Active Health Coach, we um, empower everyone to able to take care of their own health mm -hmm. through uh, adopting healthy habits, integrating into their daily life. Oh, okay, okay, so that's quite important. I mean, obviously, Richard, you would know this. You've, you've got three very active ones, so yep. it's hard not to be active when you've got active ones. But obviously, mm. like in Singapore, where our predominant favorite pastime is going to a shopping mall and walking around, yeah. right? Yeah, like, yeah. like well, what have you been doing to practice and to preach that how different ways that we can be active? Yeah, so some of the different ways, in, not just physical activities, we also include nutrition, mm -hmm. screen time, as well as sleep. Awesome. Mm, yes. Now, Richard mentioned that, you know, the parents for little kickers do get quite involved with the kids as well. So from, from your point of view, what's the importance of the family being active together as a unit? 
I guess the parents is the one that actually sets the kind of environment for the kids, mm -hmm. setting them to as an example for them to role model after. If the parents are naturally more active, the kids also, yeah, I want to be like my dad, I want to be like my mom. Yeah, they see you as a role model. So yeah. that's where the parents, and parents are the one, that, especially the mom, for example, or the dad that mm. prepares the meals for them. So they get used to uh, a healthy, balanced meal, what kind of meals they should be eating day to day right. basis. We say that, right? But like, I eat pretty healthily. But then if you ask my daughter what she wants to eat, it's like noodles and swirly fish balls or Bacon. chicken nuggets. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> well, what about your kids? Like, Nutrition-wise? Nutrition-wise, um, yeah, they, they like things that they like. Um, <laughs> but I, I must Mac admit, go, going on to your point, I've been working out on my balcony because that's what we've done. My, my son, Freddie, he came up and started working out with me every morning and then asked for his oh. own little kettlebell. Oh, so now we start doing it. So, so to your point, it does work. They do start looking at you. Yep. Evie's a bit different. She just rides, watches. <laughs> that's oh, my daughter. <laughs> Evie is. Yes. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So oh, Evie's my daughter. So uh, yeah, Alfie just runs around now. So there's... Ill, he, yeah, he's just started walking as well. Yeah. And he's really active. Very active. Okay, so then, but when it comes to dealing with kids, once in, it's not about a very long activity, is it? Sometimes yeah. it's about trying to keep the activities short, concise, and bite-sized almost, right? Yeah, so we know that kids actually has very short attention span. Mm. So actually similar to adults, after a while we start fidgeting around. We start moving, our joints start getting stiff, and especially looking at our laptops for a long period of time. Yeah our shoulders start to get achy. We want to move. Same for kids. They have been uh, looking at their screen for home-based learning especially. Mm. So they want to start moving. Uh, so you, can, you guys can actually do these exercises together, having fun together. And uh, the misconception is that you actually, uh, in order to reap the benefits of exercise, you have to do a long period of time and you have to do it at a high intensity. So this actually, uh, it can be go, uh, go into bite size, in fact. Just five to 10 minutes. Because they've got a super short attention span, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, we, if we manage to get Sienna to play one singular game for half an hour to an hour, we're like, yes, it's a win. <laughs> <laughs> so then what sort of exercises would you recommend? Yeah, so most of us are working from home right now. Even for the kids, most of the time they are sitting down. Mm. So we have a lot of uh, stiff uh, joints, especially at our hip area. So what I can recommend is we can do a sit to stand. Mm -hmm. So just getting up from your chair, just standing up, mm -hmm. and then just go back down. And they just repeat this motion for a few reps. And the kids, the kids will, they think this is a great game, right? So they'll get in on it quite quickly. Yeah, I mean, to get the kids involved, why don't we have a challenge? Oh. Sure. What, like now? Yeah. Yep. Wow. yeah. Oh. Right now. Yeah, okay. okay. All right. Let's, well, let's just do it. Mid-chat, we're going to have a 30-second challenge then uh, to see how many sit-to-stands we can do. Uh, Barbara, you are not exempt. No. Uh, yeah. Because, because, <laughs> because, because the whole point is that you can do it no matter what you're doing or no matter what you're wearing, right? right. So okay. um, we're going to each keep tally of how many we do individually. Is this so a competition? This yeah. is a competition. Yeah, it's a competition. It is there's definitely a, a, yeah, a competition. Yeah, there's a winner. There's so if winner. you are at home at the moment, you can right. do it with us. 30 seconds on the clock. We're going to be doing as many sit to stands <laughs> as possible. Look look at Richard. We're all, <laughs> we're all, we're all I'm stuck in the chair. Right. Right. Okay. <laughs> so for starting position, we can all place our palms on our shoulders. Oh, right. Oh, right. Oh, right. Yeah. Serious. Okay. So you cannot cheat, right? But for safety reason, in case we just fall back, remember you can just use your hands to uh, support it. yourself, brace yourself. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Alrighty. Okay. Great. We've got thirty okay, seconds. Got time ready. In five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. <laughs> oh God! You got <laughs> Come on! Come on! Yeah. <laughs> Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. How many you at? Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. I feel like I'm losing. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. I feel like I'm losing. Five, Five seconds left. Seconds. We can oh. do it. Can't. I think Barbara's winning. <laughs> oh. Yes. Oh. Yeah. How do you guys feel? <laughs> Hot. <laughs> That is a really <laughs> fun way. Okay, so what was your tally? How many did you do? I did 36. 36, Barbara? 36? Yeah. How many did you do, Richard? 
I lost count. <laughs> <laughs> I started laughing. I, was, I, was I think it definitely wasn't 36. I think it was about 29, I mean, 30. Well, well, I think to be able to hit around one a second is a pretty good benchmark, right? Yeah, yeah. But obviously, like, all of us are like, <laughs> just bear with us one second. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but, uh, but I think it's great because like, if you turn it into a competition like that at home with your kids, then it becomes a lot more fun and engaging, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. It's I'm sure Barbara is still enjoying the moment right Bar now. Barbara, Barbara's still like... <laughs> so, so I've been doing this move for 30 minutes for 30 days challenge, right? And today is 30 of 30, so technically 30 seconds counts, right? Uh, My hashtag didn't specify like 30 for 30 minutes. So, um, okay. Oh no, go ahead. Oh yeah, so, okay. so I just want to know, like, aside from doing like little things like that, little challenges, what else would you recommend as a way to get parents are like a little bit more involved and mm. active with their kids. Okay, so kids like to be hug, like to be touched. So what you can do is you can actually hold them and add it as your additional weights when you do your various home exercises. Sienna's 17 kilos, nah. -uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like weights with resistance yeah. and moving. Yeah, so a lot of daddies are putting their young children at the shoulder. Yeah. while they do their push-ups or when they are doing their squats and then giving them a push-up. The kids love that and yeah. the dad has this kind of time to bond together and mm. at the same time, you get your exercise done. Oh yeah. my gosh. So within little, li little, little kickers, little kickers. <laughs> little kickers, within little kickers then, um, is it, are these sorts of things that you sort of like actively preach as well? Yeah, I mean, so with COVID, obviously, we didn't know what to do because the whole business changed overnight, our whole mm. mapping. So we built a YouTube channel, which please everyone can go out and do. It's a free channel and all the games and the coaches actually get the games. The thing for us that exactly what you said, it's all 10 minutes long and make sure that it's somewhere that the children can learn and get, get involved. So anything from like the warm up, it can be really fun to doing some dancing mm -hmm. in front of the TV. Um, I know ourselves, we have like a disco Friday night and you just put some music on and have a dance around. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, um, you know, it, it, just to get the, the heart rate up. Yeah. But also being involved, just knowing what they're doing is good. So, I mean, obviously little kickers, predominantly revolves around football and the skills that you acquire as, as a result of playing football. Yeah. But what, are you, what is your take? And one team, please feel free to chime in as well. Um, sports specific at a young age or just learn the basics of sport in general? Mm. Like, should we, should we be focusing and getting our kids to say, yep, yeah, you are going to be a football star. You are going to learn football and that's it. Yeah, I think... For children, like with the Little Kickers program, it's all about just learning sport in general. So hand-eye coordination. We also build in the fact of learning colors, numbers, being able to know what pirates are, being able to, game, like, to actually increase the imagination. For children, they either go to a support and really enjoy it and they like it, but the main thing is, is getting them moving. Mm. Um, I think football's a great one because the ball's furthest from the brain, so it's like, <laughs> so that's the, why it is so hard. I but I think, know, man. I've <laughs> had some bump ins with that one. <laughs> <laughs> so I think with any kind of um, sport, it's, it's what interests the child. Mm. Um, if they're really into it, like I've, I also coach rugby, so it's a different type of dynamic. Some children really enjoy martial arts, and I think that's very good from a discipline perspective. Yes. Um, <laughs> so I think it's, you know, the foundation of sport is all based on three things, swimming, athletics, um, and, and so every, all the sport is built on top of that. Um, yeah, I totally agree with Richard. Most important is to get the, uh, keep it fun for the kids, mm. get them enjoy it moving. Yeah. Yeah. And then from then on, uh, they can always look up to taking it as a habit and to move up to their uh, adult age. Because yeah. I'm, I'm quite curious, I mean, we've grown up in a society where obviously a lot of the time um, we want to specialise in something when it comes to, you know, learning the piano or, you know, picking up a particular sport. Um, we feel like, I feel like as kids we're almost pressured to stick to one particular path and you excel in that one. Um, what are some of maybe the disadvantages you've seen of people, you know, or parents saying, okay, you pick up this one particular sport and then that's all you do? Yep. So let me answer that. Uh, the danger of that to specialize your kids too young is uh, getting them uh, having too many injuries as a start. Okay. Because their body is not developed well yet. So you will want to tap on a different uh, uh, body system mm. 
mm -hmm. and to train them up uh, in different ways. So mm. you need different kind of exercises, a variety of exercises to groom their different muscles all together, their coordination, their balance, their perceptions. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I agree, maybe certain skill set, for example, piano, for example, swimming, you need to start from a young age. Mm -hmm. But if you're talking about uh, sports safety, we're talking about burnout psychologically. Mm. Mm. So we try to stay away from that. Otherwise, um, in Singapore, you can see that a lot of kids start off at a very young age, but... You get pressured into it, right? Yeah. You lose the passion for it. Yeah. Okay. And starting, mm. if, if you have been training that for 20 years, by the time when it's your prime age to represent Singapore, you're already burnt out. Yeah, exactly. And you're done and dusted. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess pacing yourself is definitely the moral of the story here and making sure that we get all those different skills that you can get from programs such as Little Kickers and yep. keeping it nice and varied. Uh, we're going to go for a short break. Guys, thank you so much for joining no us. Thanks for sharing thank our Little you. Kickers once in. You are not done. You're going to be bringing us through some bite-sized exercises that we can do from the comfort of our own home. When we return after this short break, you're watching Kickback with Kelly and Barbara. Step right up, draw the next cut You wanted the fight, we're animals So get along with everybody else yeah. Is this ship sinking? I've been thinking And Barbara and Wan Sin, who's going to be bringing us through some bite-sized workouts that we can do from the comfort of our own home. Now, I think it's really, really important that when you are working out with your family, like yep. we mentioned earlier on, it's important to keep it bite-sized, right, Wan Sin? Yep. So we're just going to do three exercises today, and then we're going to do 20 reps each. Okay. Wow. Okay. Cool. So some modifications so going on as well, right? Yep, yep, we can okay. do that. Okay, so 20 reps each. If you are sat at home at the moment, jump on up, get on in and get involved uh, because the whole point is that you can do this from wherever you are, right? Exactly. Oh, and yep. grab the kids as well. Yes. Grab the kids. They can do it with all of us. Okay, so once in, let's get you to step forward and then you can uh, start us off on Guide our workout this right. evening. Come on, So let's you go. just need a small little space mm -hmm. and then what we're going to do, a uh, continuity from the previous exercise, from the sit to stand, what we're going to do is uh, squat, to single leg balance, mm -hmm. all right? So okay. you just need to stand shoulder width apart, mm -hmm. right? And then with your both arms in front to balance yourself and go into a half squat position, pushing your hips backward and then move up to a single leg balance. Yeah, with your hands raised oh, above. hands up, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was like, my and hands are really focused. Up and anyway. change leg. Yeah. Got to so, keep your balance on this one. Yeah. Make sure that you don't sway off. And I guess the slower you go, the more difficult it is balance-wise, right? Yep, exactly. And while keeping your hips back and your back straight, you can tease your kids a little bit and ask them to mimic you together and do this exercise, having fun at the same oh. time. 
It is a lot of fun. Coordination. So who's counting these reps? One. We are at eight. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, I don't even remember right now. Yeah. So this is a great exercise I'm for actually the glutes. feeling a burn. Yeah. Like already. But I think what's yeah. important to note is that if you are an older member of the household, it's still possible to do, like you said, like on the chair as well, right? Yeah, so you can have a chair behind in case you, uh, you will tend to fall backward. Mm -hmm. Or what you can do is instead of lifting your thigh so high, you can just use your toe mm -hmm. as an additional support. Ah. So standing this way, go back to a squat. So I see. And it. then just this way. I feel like we hit 20. So you can. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so this exercise will actually help <laughs> you to strengthen up your hip flexors muscles which you have been sitting down for so long. Mm -hmm. And then the shoulder mobility movement as well to add in the overall blood circulation. Okay. Right, awesome. so... What we got next? next exercise? I'm ready to go. Yeah. Warm up now. Next will be a bit of uh, boxing. Mm -hmm. Alright, so what we will Barbara, do... Barbara, this is right down your alley. Let's not speak too soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to take uh, four steps. Mm -hmm. So I will just demonstrate first. Uh, just imagine you are stepping on a box, uh, so they have four corners. So go to the right corner, go to the left corner, go back to where you were. Four steps. Okay. okay. So just like one, dancing. two, three, four. So this like is this boxing. Is like <laughs> yeah, give it a little <laughs> shake. Play give on. Give it a little bit of groove. Okay, no, let's, let's, let's focus. Oh, okay. Don't worry, don't worry. Just play your favourite <laughs> track it's while exactly you're doing It's exactly like you're dealing with two kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, fist up, ready to punch. So okay. what you're going to do is just walk first. Yeah. And when you are right in front, give two punch, two jabs, and come back. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> two jabs, and come back. Okay, let's do this together. Let's go. Two jabs, come back. Two jabs, come back. <laughs> Two jabs. Y'all okay. can't see, but people are actually laughing at me right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, me you included. can increase the challenge by doing a continuous boxing as you step. Oh yeah, I'm feeling it. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yep. So this uh -huh. test on your coordination as well while you're stepping, focusing on your box step. Oh, I'm not in sync. <laughs> I'm saying in my own little world. Don't oh, worry. The objective is to get you moving and have fun at the same time. Okay, let's keep going. Yeah, come on. I see the cameraman likes my shoes. <laughs> punch harder, punch harder. Think of your work. Yeah, think of your boss. <laughs> Why is it I'm never in sync with you guys? <laughs> Zero synchronization. Well, I guess it's really good for kids as well, right? Because we talk about the hand-eye coordination. Yeah. Of which and I, have I think, yeah, we've established that Barbara doesn't have much, but I think it's great to see. <laughs> what? I can't talk and do this. Like I'm, I'm just <laughs> way too much it. coordination. Okay. All right. Okay. So we go to the last exercise mm -hmm. where uh, you know kids like to be on their falls. Yep. So we're going to do uh, this exercise called the inchworm. So it gets your whole body up mm -hmm. and down. Cool. All right. So I'm just going to do a demonstration. You might uh, want to come back so you got enough room, or do it side to side. Okay. Hey. So you just basically need to take some steps forward with mm -hmm. your hands, with yep. your palms. Mm -hmm. uh, just take six, uh, six steps forward with your palms. So just lower yourself. One, two, three, four, five, six. Go into a push-up position. You're not going to do push-up here, I was but if you say, want to knock add it on, down. No. come on, Wanzi, knock yeah, it down. If you want to add on, you can do that. And then just take step backward again. Awesome. Nice. And just stand up. Let's do okay. it. Okay. Let's do okay. it. Ten reps. Ten reps. All right. <laughs> Barbara's just downgraded us from 20 reps to 10. Okay, let's okay. start. Ready? And let's go. And up. Yep. If you're doing this exercise together with your kids, what you can do is when you're down below, Mm -hmm. Give a high five to your kids. High five. And high then five. go back. So, any advice for people who maybe don't have a strong enough core to hold this position? Is there a regression? Can people drop down onto their knees maybe? Oh, you yeah, definitely it? you can. <laughs> so, going down, your hands will help you to cushion. And Ooh. if you don't have the strength to go forward, just yep. rest your knee on the floor. Yep. And then just go almost to a kneeling push-up position. Uh -huh. And then go back up again. Ah, okay. Push yourself up. 
Oh, very, right. very nice. Good job, guys. That was a great workout. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yep, done. <laughs> everything is engaged. Everything is raw, ready to go. All right. Well, I think that wraps up Cheek Day on Kickback with Kelly and Barbara. All about the families, all about the kids today. Thank you very much, once again for sharing with us those little bite-sized things that we can do from the comfort of our own home with our kids, even with our grandparents, to be honest. I think everyone can get involved in the action, and that's what it's all about, right? Active health and making sure that the family is included. Join us again next week for more action here on Kickback with Kelly and Barbara. But from us now, goodbye, so long, have a great weekend. We'll see you on the flip side. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. I do one more. <laughs> yeah. Push up. Nope. <laughs> we knew that was never gonna happen. Whew.